Mr. Del Duca, transportation to discuss the provisional <coughs> offenses to reform. To parliamentary assistant to Minister Shirelli in the energy portfolio. I spoke to the importance of the transition of Canadian nuclear laboratories to a world-class research facility through the GOCO model presently being implemented by the federal government. Other issues were addressed by, by the other wardens attending, including joint several liability and the cost and stability of our electrical supply system for our commercial sectors. In a separate delegation, county representatives and representatives from the town of Petawawa met with MPP Millicent, parliamentary assistant to Minister Duguid, Minister of Economic Development, Employment and Infrastructure regarding the expansion of Petawawa Boulevard and the need to partner with the provincial and federal governments on this very important initiative related to Garrison Petawawa. County representatives also met with Minister Del Duca, Minister of Transportation, pertaining to the extension of the four laning of Highway 417. MPP Yakabuski and Mayor LeMay also attended. The minister was very aware of our concerns and was informed that the county was submitting an updated business case regarding the extension of the four lane and its importance to the county of Renford. On behalf of all members of county council, I extend condolences to Councillor Jet Reinwald on the of the township of Laurentian Hills and his family on the passing of his father, Mr. William Reinwald. Congratulations to Councillor Bob Sweet on his appointment of chair of the AMO County <coughs> Office. This concludes my address for the session of County Council. And we'll move to the delegation section and I'll ask Mr. Anderson to introduce our presenter, please. Thank you, uh, Mr. Warden and members of County Council on your desk this morning. You will have a package from Central Mortgage and Housing Corporation. We're pleased to have with us uh, Vivian Chi. Vivian is a corporate representative for Eastern Ontario of the Central Mortgage and Housing Corporation. She works throughout the region promoting CMHC products and services uh, to a variety of community stakeholders and development projects. She talks specifically about affordable housing and sustainable communities. So with that said, I'd like to introduce to Vivian Chi. And Vivian's going to walk you through the presentation here this morning and some of the products that Central Mortgage and Housing brings to the table. I should mention to you, we've done a lot of work with CMHC over the years. We're pleased to have them here this morning as our partner. Vivian. Thank you very much, David. Can everybody hear me OK? Yes. Well, thank you very much for the invitation to be here today uh, and run through County Council Chambers. At is an absolute pleasure, and it's a wonderful opportunity to get to know some of you a little bit better, and I definitely look forward to our continued conversations after this meeting. I encourage you to please reach out to me in your kits. You have my business card, and you have some of the relevant information that I'll be touching on today regarding tools that are available at CMHC to facilitate the development of affordable housing. CMHC, otherwise known as Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation, is the National Housing Authority for the Government of Canada, and we do represent the federal government, half of the federal government, under the current Affordable Housing Agreement, which is called the Investment in Affordable Housing. The acronym is IAH, and I will be making reference to that agreement as we continue our discussion today. Um, in addition to affordable housing, CMHC does a lot of research. We also provide mortgage loan insurance, both on the affordable housing front and as well as market housing. Uh, today, I have been asked to focus specifically on affordable housing tools, and in the interest of the time that we do have, I will be focusing specifically on items one through six. I would also, again, be happy to continue any conversation um, and discuss any other resources that we have outside of affordable housing uh, following today's event. So please feel free to reach out to me. So specifically, I'll be talking about tools through the Affordable Housing Center, specifically how we work with groups in your communities to develop affordable housing. I'm gonna talk about our housing development fact sheets, the project viability calculator, seed funding, and proposal development funding, and we'll talk about web forums and touch on some of the accessible information that we have related to research that enhances accessibility and visibility in our homes. Before we go on, 
I know some of us have varying knowledges related to affordable housing, and I thought that it may be relevant to set the context. Here is the, the housing continuum, which depicts housing in our communities. Uh, to the left, we have housing that helps those who are the most vulnerable in our communities, folks that sometimes could be chronically homeless. It could also include low-income seniors, persons with disabilities, and families. As we move through the continuum to the right, we have housing that is dictated by our market conditions. Today we will be focusing on affordable housing. So it takes all of us working together to make affordable housing a reality in our communities, and this includes the federal government. So as I mentioned, CNHC works with the federal government to fund affordable housing through the investment in affordable housing, which is the current agreement regulating affordable housing. This funding tends to be cost-matched by our provinces and territories. We then work with our municipal governments. And here in the province of Ontario, it is the service managers that work to deliver the funding locally. They have the flexibility based on local conditions and needs to use the funding as they deem fit. We also work with housing stakeholders, everybody in our communities, from home builders, to housing consultants, nonprofits, co-ops, faith-based groups. It takes all of us working together, including all levels of government, to make affordable housing happen. In August 2014, the Government of Canada through CMHC and the Province of Ontario through the Ministry of Municipal Affairs and Housing renewed the investment in affordable housing, which provides over $801 million over the next five years. From the period of 2011 to 2014, over 17,000 households in Ontario received assistance under the investment in affordable housing, which helped them have housing and a higher quality of life. Service managers, as I mentioned, are responsible for the local delivery of the program. And they have a variety of tools that they can choose from to spend the funding, which includes funding for capital development, rental subsidies, Ontario renovates, or affordable homeownership programs. So who creates affordable housing? As I mentioned, it takes all levels of government working together with our local housing stakeholders in our communities. This could include community leaders such as yourself, Nonprofit housing providers, supportive housing providers, social service agencies who provide supports to folks that live in the units, charitable service organizations, faith-based groups, private sector developers, and of course, municipalities. Each partner brings a variety of tools and resources to the table and form part of a strong team that allows us to be successful. So what are CMHC's affordability criteria? I think it's important to touch on this because it's important to actually know what we're talking about and how deep the rents will be. In the case of affordable housing, we like to see units that are modest in design and amenities. For home ownership projects, these are units that are priced below average selling prices for similar comparables. Today, I think we'll be focusing a little bit more on affordable rental housing. And this means that the majority of the units in the project are at rents that are below average market rents, and specifically at the 80th percentile or lower. CMHC surveys our rental market once a year, and this allows us to define affordable rents. Here I have provided some of the rents for Pembroke and Penawawa. And in communities where we are unable to survey the market, and sometimes this could be a community where the population is under 10,000, we do have unsurveyed areas which allow us to provide you some guidance. In some of the smaller communities, as I mentioned, where we have populations below 10,000, 
uh, small changes in the rental housing market can vastly skew trends in rents and housing, and this can sometimes be a burden or a challenge. And this is why we provide unsurveyed rents. Housing development fact sheets. It's good information for the experienced housing provider, and it's amazing information for the new provider. CMHC has a family of housing development fact sheets focusing on each and every step of the affordable housing development process. So we break down the step to provide the new proponent with a little bit more information on what each and every stage of the affordable housing development process will involve. For example, generating community support and overcoming NIMBY, not in my backyard. Building your team. Having a strong team of experts that will help you move the project forward is crucial to your success. Analyzing need and demand. It's important to know the current and local market conditions in order to have a viable project that will last for decades. And writing a business plan is a very important step in the process. It is the vision of the affordable housing project. And it will be a plan that each and every partner that you look to partner with will want to see. CMHC also has housing development checklists, and we have a paper version on our website, but we also have an interactive version which is, is very useful. Um, one of the proponents that I work with in another community indicated that she found that the housing development checklist really provided her with insight as to each and every milestone that she had to go through as she got uh, the funding, lined up her partners, and eventually got shovel in the ground. So the housing development fact sheets are wonderful information outlining the feasibility stage, the pre-development stage, as well as the construction stage. CMHC also has a project viability assessment calculator, which was recently enhanced. It allows the proponent or the housing group to input calculations and numbers and allows them to assess the viability of their project, ultimately indicating whether the funding model will be successful based on the rents and the expenses of the project. This pro project viability calculator is very useful and allows a budget calculation for five years. Today I'd like to take a moment to focus on the CMHCC funding, which is a wonderful resource at the pre-development <coughs> stage. It helps with pre-development activities related to the affordable housing project. We recognize that there's a lot of challenge at this stage, and this is why we have seed funding to help the housing proponents move forward. Seed funding is $10,000 in the form of a grant, and there's an optional $10,000 interest-free loan, which is repayable. Funding tends to be repaid after work is complete, and it typically is tied to a specific affordable housing project. Some of the eligible uses under seed funding at the pre-development stage include incorporation of the not-for-profit, need and demand study, exploration of funding sources, preliminary design, preliminary financial viability analysis, ultimately helping you build a business plan. CMHC then has proposal development funding, which I refer to as PDF, which helps proponents at the next stage. So once they get the seed funding and build a solid business plan, there is the option to apply for PDF funding, which is an interest-free loan that's repayable, and it's up to $100,000. Under the proposal development funding, we are looking to help groups move forward with their housing project. And again, we're still looking at pre-development activities. And they do include soil sort of load bearing tests, environmental site assessment, project drawing and specs, 
professional fees and cost estimates, development permits, contract documents, as well as application fees. Mortgage loan insurance for affordable housing is another resource that CMHC provides. <coughs> it is funding that typically the bank or financial institution that's funding your mortgage um, will require. The insurance protects the lenders against the borrower's default, but it typically will also allow the housing proponent to have more flexibilities that will help their project be successful. For example, higher loan to value is going as high as 95%. An amortization that could go as long as 40 years. Relaxed debt coverage ratios. Mortgage loan insurance is one of the ways that we can help affordable housing projects be successful. So what are some of the ideas that I've worked in other communities? They could involve many creative ideas, um, such as benevolent funding, donations, community bonds, leasing property, acquiring and rehabilitating non-residential properties, such as schools or churches, into residential properties, or building new housing. And this is a quick snapshot of some of the municipal tools that have been used in, in communities in Canada and across the province. In the interest of time, I, I'd be happy to continue the conversations if any of you have questions specifically about some of these tools. I thought it may be helpful to let you know that CMHC does host monthly web forums on topics related to affordable housing. These forums are free. Uh, it's a wonderful opportunity to learn more about affordable housing development, challenges, best practices, and keys to success. And it's great information in terms of you being able to network. And here are some of the questions that some of the other projects have out there beyond your community, across the province, and across the nation. CMHC, through our research department, also has a variety of tools related to accessibility and adaptability. Given, given our aging demographics here in the county of Redford, I thought it was relevant to know that we have free fact sheets that detail each and every subject matter related to accessibility in our homes. We also have Housing for Older Canadians, which is a wonderful tool which provides insight to those that are looking to build housing in communities that help folks age in their community. Um, so we have a five-volume series, and it touches on ideas and questions related to mobility, accessibility, community design, and technology, for example. CMHC also has a vast number of affordable housing project profiles on our website, and these are stories of affordable housing projects that have been successful, again, across the nation and across the province. Uh, I thought perhaps this one might be an inspiration. And it's a project that was built in Charlotte Lake, so um, in the county of Frontenac. It's a project that was joint with the township of Central Frontenac, CMHC, the province of Ontario, and North Frontenac Nonprofit Housing Corporation. The project took started uh, its, its discussions back in 2008 and took over three years to be developed. It involved numerous partners from all over the community and all three levels of government. There are five one-bedroom rental units for seniors who have fixed incomes. And these units have allowed folks that have no longer been able to maintain their homes to remain in their community. The units are accessible and have senior-friendly features. And 
and is the first seniors housing project in Ontario to receive the greenhouse certification from better quality. So it's a highly energy efficient project with radiant heat floors and solar, solar thermal hot water. The funding received, sorry, the project received seed funding from CMHC, as well as funding under the Canada Ontario Affordable Housing Program and under Canada's Economic Action Plan. Council did have a role to play to help make this project successful, which included approving the severance of the land and the rezoning. The property was made available by North Frontenac Housing Corporation. And there's common space in this building, which allows for the seniors who live here to congregate, to socialize, and to become a meaningful part of their community. I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to present today and to be your partner as you move forward with your affordable housing projects in your community. I look forward to your questions. Thank you very much and have a wonderful day. Councillor Wisniewski Moore. Thank you. Thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, I have two questions, if I may, Mr. Warden. Certainly. Uh, your definition of seniors. You said five units for seniors. Uh, what was the definition of the requirement on the senior? Oh, uh, I'm not quite sure. Um, I, I, that may um, be a question that I'll have to kind of get back to you on. I think um, it, it may have been a 55 plus definition. <laughs> Um, but if you won't, if you mind, um, I, I could get back to you specifically regarding that project. Each and every project could have their own particular requirements. Um, from CMHC's perspective, um, typically it would be 65 plus. Thank you. I think Dave, Dave, did you? No, I think uh, maybe you did it on the, okay. the Ontario Human Rights Code, 65 plus. Okay. But there is, you can put into place at the service manager level, a declining age policy, if approved by county council. Okay, and my second question, uh, you said that they got seed money and, and uh, how, mu how much uh, in a percentage was covered by those two funding agencies that you indicated? Um, I don't know the total cost of the project, okay. but the funding that was received by the two levels of government amounted to $640,000 for the five units that were built. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, I have some familiarity with that project and the total cost of the project was in the neighborhood of about $800,000. Uh, that included the, um, that included the donation or the assignment of the land. Thank you, thank you Mr. Ward. Councilor Wisniewski. Thank you, Mr. Ward. Any other questions or comments? Uh, Councilor Rangwell? Uh, thank you. I was just wondering the the, uh, uh, the house uh, section of the question. Where is it located in conjunction to? Uh, is, is it close to a town or is it right in the town of Cherry Lake? I believe it is. I believe it's located in the town. Okay. There was quite a bit of support from the local dignitaries as well in this community, which added to the success. We have many more wonderful inspirational examples, so um, please let me know if you would like to, to find those on our website. Thank you very much for that. It was very informative, and, and I, I should say that I found uh, CMHC through Vivian to be quite, uh, quite approachable and uh, <coughs> full of knowledge and assistance. I mean, previous to this year, I was involved in a project where we've tapped into CMHC for some seed funding to establish a project, and uh, it, was a, it was a very easy process to, to get the money and then to, to report back on it. So it's one of the few funding sources that doesn't gobble up 30% of the funding to report back to them. So thank you very much for your information and your time. And now I'll call on Councillor McKay. Oh, sorry, correspondence. Thank you very much, Mr. Warden, members of the
County Council. All correspondence has been forwarded to the appropriate committee. Thank you. Now, Councilor McKay will give the Development Property Committee report, please. Um, we are property development, development and property committee, wish to report and recommend the following. Uh, for information, there is in your uh, county council report about the planning activity, planning division activity tracker, uh, table for council information. The activity track is for January. Uh, in January, there was 20 new severance applications and they prepared 17 planning checklists for general requirements pre-consultation. A bylaw lifting, part lot control was approved by the Town of Brentford creating three townhouse units. The Town of Petalolo Council has given direction to the planning division staff to prepare an update to the Town's comprehensive zoning bylaw. Number two, specific, <laughs> I didn't know here. Uh, species, thank you, <laughs> at risk. We have been advised by the Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry that the data the Ministry will be providing us to screen for threatened and endangered species is fundamentally different from the current data set. The new data will be more coarse and hence less accurate and will require more interpretation from planning division and GIS staff to assess and identify potential habitat. Um, we intend to bring a full report to Council at a later date to discuss the changes and implement implications at more detail. But we first want to contact our municipal planning colleagues with Brantford County who also use the data. So the municipality should be prepared to work hopefully with the uh, Development Planning Committee on this. The Ontario Provincial Police Facility, 450 O'Brien Road. Table for constant information is a project summary report for the OPP facility. Uh, you'll find it on page nine in your county council report. And staff is continuing to work with the developer on this project. Number four, the National Research Universal Reactor. The federal government announced on February the 6th, 2015, that the NRU at the Canadian Nuclear Laboratories and CNL site will cease operations on March 31st, 2018. There has been the disannouncement of facts, many aspects of the work at Chalk River Laboratories and many of the employees. The NRU was an important feature at the CRL site uh, and bidders, qualified bidders engaged in the government-owned company operated restructuring process. As there are very few high neutron flux research reactors available in the world for scientific research. Uh, the shutdown of the NRU is not completely unanticipated, but the general expectation had been that it would be licensed until 2021, and plans to refurbish, upgrade, and extend the operating life of the reactor are were ongoing. <coughs> Number nine, forestry activities. Included in this report is a successful bid summary that you'll find below. Um, which will give us a total expected revenue of 187957 Total bid prices are based on estimate volumes. The actual volume amounts are based on actual volumes harvested. Council will be updated on the process of the 2015 operation throughout the year. The um, information on the forestry activity tracker can be found on page 8 of your county council report. The GIS activities. This is table for council's information and the information we found on page 11 of the county council report. Resolutions, Highway 417 expansion. On January 28, 2015, county council debated a resolution passed by the town of Petawawa requesting the Ministry of Transportation consider the commencement of four lane expansion of Highway 17 eastward from North Manford uh, to meet the west word construction when it eventually reaches the midpoint of the quarter in the copy. As a result, County Council directed that this matter be reviewed by the Development Property Committee and staff bring forward a plan to review the business case for the accelerated extension of Highway 17 dated June 2013. 
Baker for Council's review of the proposed deadline for the update of the business case, a copy of the business case for the accelerated, accelerated extension of Highway 17 in June 2013 will be distributed at the meeting. So it must be in your information. Resolution number DPCC 150208, moved by chair and seconded by committee, that the staff undertake a review of the business case for the accelerated extension of Highway 17, June 2013, within the parameters of the outline provided in the report, and further that the draft will be provided to the committee in June 2015. It will be very difficult for the federal government to. I have my pages. Visitors to 
the three shows at the Toronto Outdoor Adventure Show on February the 20th to the 22nd, Montreal Motorcycle Show from February 27th to March 1st, and the Ottawa Outdoor and Adventure Travel Show March 21st to 22nd. Number seven, Ideas Forum, the Enterprise Grantwood County is in the planning stages of an idea forum, which the ERC received funding to host on March the 10th, 2015 at the Best Western and Copper Center here in Brantford. It will go from nine to four. The objective of the forum is to build community collaborations that were developed in the first round of the ideas forum hosted in 2014. The ERC staff have assembled an information package of available programs and services that have been placed in each of the council receipts. We encourage you to have a look and read them. Number eight, Summer Company. Summer Company officially opens to receive applications as of January 28, 2015. Staff anticipate they will have the usual number of eight to 10 approved applications that they will be able to recommend to the ministry. So now I'm gonna take back this a little bit here. Back to number 13. For bylaws, 1763098 Ontario Inc. Lease Child Paradise, 450 Brian Road, Brantford. Table for Council's information is a bylaw and lease between the County of Brantford and 1763098 Ontario Inc. located in 450 Brian Road, Brantford. The previous lease expired on February the 28th, 2014, and has been in an over holding position while negotiations continue. The term of the lease is for five years commencing on March the 1st, 2014 and expiring on February the 28th, 2019. The lease has been changed to a gross lease with operating costs included. The previous lease rate was for $16 per square foot for five years plus the operating costs. The chart that follows shows you the new, uh, the new rates. Resolution number DPCC 150211, moved by chair and seconded by committee, the county council passed a bylaw authorizing the warden and the chief administration officer clerk to enter into a lease with 1763098 Ontario King, Child Paradise at 450 O'Brien Road in Renfrew, Ontario. All of which is respectfully su submitted. Robert Sweet, chair, and committee members G. Doncaster, E. E. and G. Gibson, G. McKay, T. Miller, and T. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, comments, questions, concerns from members of council on item number one. Item number two, Councillor Eskimor. Thank you. Um, of course, this is dear to my heart, so uh, I will, you're going to be presenting us with a full report. So just a quick question. Um, better or worse? Uh, Mr. Morrow, I'm, I'm going to say it's worse, but... Oh, gosh. Thank you, thank you, uh, Warden, uh, through you to uh, Councillor Visneski Moore. Um, I don't know if it's either worse or better, but what I will say is the province is changing their approach on how they give us the data. The data will go from what we used to get from the district office, um, and we will now get it through what's called the Leo Warehouse. So the data we will get will be much, much coarse in nature. There will be less information around that data, which will make our jobs much more challenging. So um, to give you a, a bit of a hint in terms of what we're thinking, and but we'd like to meet with the local municipalities first is, um, we may not want to use this data down the road because it's just going to cause us grief down the road. Oh. So uh, you know, that will be the challenge that's presented. But again, we want to have a conversation with the local municipalities. And I think in the end, we want to be consistent with the local municipalities in our approach in terms of how we're dealing with species at risk issues. But again, this change has made our lives that's much more challenging, and I think it has made the lives of our ratepayers even more challenging in terms of having any definitive answer as to how to deal with species at risk on the property. So I'll leave it at that. So, so, <coughs> so um, when does it take effect? And uh, the second thing is, um, it says you're going to be talking across to, uh, so how is that approach? and a full report you're going to be providing us at County Council. So I guess I have three questions in there, Mr. Warden, I apologize. When does it take effect? When, uh, how is your approach on approaching the municipalities? And is it 
uh, you will be presenting a full report to us uh, when. Okay, if you don't mind, Paul. Thank you, Warden. Through you to uh, Council. Um, the, uh, the province has informed us informally that this will take place in March or April, that we will, this transition will occur with the data. Um, with respect to your second question, staff will be organizing a meeting inviting local municipal staff to have a conversation about planning. So that will be done through our planning department. And again, Jason Davis through the GIS folks uh, will be there as well to explain the intricacies as it relates to the data. And we'll have that conversation about how to deal with it. And we hope to do that in April. Um, resulting from that conversation, we would bring that back to DMP first and then um, have that conversation again before it comes back to DMP. Again, we need to have that conversation with the CAO to get the approval on how to proceed as well. So um, that will come through um, probably in June, um, Councillor. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ward. Thank you, Thank you. Councillor Donahue, and then uh, Ryan. Right Thank you, Mr. Ward. I'm just I'm curious if, if uh, Director of Planning and Mr. Morrow might have some idea if this new process uh, was developed by anyone's conduct from the social assistance management system. Uh, <laughs> I'm assuming that was a rhetorical question. <laughs> we're not. We're not sure of any connection. Thank you, okay. Councillor Rumble. Uh, thank you. Uh, I was just wondering uh, what sort of effect this may have on the existing species at risk and how they are placed in the municipalities today. Is that going to? Is there going to be a major change uh, in those areas? It's, uh, Thank you, uh, Councillor. Um, what we're seeing in the preliminary look at the data that we have is because the data we're getting is much more coarse in nature, um, it covers a much more expansive piece of the map. So more properties would be flagged for the species that are on the ground. So uh, again, I, at the risk of getting folks upset around the table, that's what the preliminary data shows. Thank you. So in short, the data that we were, are going to be receiving is less precise. Less precise data then leads to more confusion by the applicants, which then generates more stress and work for our employees, because our employees are the ones that have to interpret political legislation and political data, which is less precise. Councillor Brzezinski, more. And unfortunately, the county gets painted with the brush. So, you know, and all the taxpayers that are approaching me about severances and issues about species at risk, and I did meet with the minister, uh, Morrow. He never mentioned uh, any of this in my 15 minutes of fame. Um, you know, uh, in talking to my taxpayers, they're continuously saying, it's the county, it's the county. Uh, that's uh, responsible for species at risk and the difficulty that people are uh, experiencing with severances because of these issues, the ESA. So it's, it's really very unfortunate and I think we have to continue to tell the government that, uh, you know, it's not us and they should review this more difficult. Nobody's going to be able to do anything with their land. I mean, it's just absolutely blows my mind. And I'm sorry, Paul, I, I do take it out sometimes on Paul and his staff because I'm so frustrated. So I apologize ahead of time because you're going to see me coming with that frustration. <laughs> so anyways, thank you very much, Mr. Warden. Thank you. Councillor Donahue, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Warden. I would like to know, uh, Mr. Warden, from uh, Mr. Morrow, um, this seems to, to uh, have followed a, a fairly standard operating procedure now, but I'm curious if there might be to be somewhat of a silver lining in, has there been more latitude for local interpretation um, given to the planning department? Thank you, uh, Councillor. Um, you can look at it like that, but without the precision in the data, it will be a challenge to give a concrete answer to a property owner without having them do additional work. Um, our challenge here for us is, you know, we're kind of caught in the middle, as uh, Mayor Wisniewski Moore um, has indicated, because we don't have the expertise on staff to deal with species that are specific types of concerns. 
Um, so again, the individual landowner is going out to a consulting firm to get that answer. Is there a silver lining in this? Uh, depending on where it goes, um, uh, we may not be dealing with those requests because we can't. So the land the problem is that puts the onus back on the lander, landowner. Um, Mayor Wisniewski or Councilor Wisniewski Moore is correct in saying that we're the meat in the middle of the sandwich here because we've been negotiating and mediating our way through these various applications uh, with the individual <coughs> landowner. And our challenge will be is we won't have that ability because we don't have the detail in, in terms of the data we're working with. What I can tell you also is that uh, when uh, the Warden's Caucus meets in this area in June, it's our intention uh, to try and have this placed on the agenda for discussion with the presentation of the document we prepared in February of 2013. With that document, as you will recall, what we did was we spoke to all the sectors and quantified the damage the species of risk legislation is doing to our local economy. What we'll be doing at the meeting will again move along by challenging the members of the Warden's Caucus to then also prepare their own study similar to ours, because I think that's the only way it's going to have any effect in changing government policy is to show it's damaging the, the economy locally, regionally, and internationally. This information will, will I think, also be helpful because it'll show, you know, by, by extrapolation, that it, it further delays application because people will err on the side of caution and ask for more precise information. Again, at any point during the planning process, whether it's zoning or official plan amendments, someone can object and that then sends it back to a restart or at least partway into the recess into the process where people then have to go out and get more information. Because of this fuzzy data set that we're going to be getting, that's likely to happen more often. So it could potentially cause um, land prices to raise uh, somewhat significantly as you have to add another layer of information at the applicant's expense. So we're aware of that. We're trying to package that information together uh, to present it to the Warden's Caucus and start pushing it up. You know, I think we all agreed this was going to be a four or five or six or seven or even a ten year process to have the problems change their thinking on this or at least recognize there needs to be more local, local authority granted to us, similar to the ability to to approve subdivisions and official plan and zoning amendments. So we act as an agent for the government on all land use planning issues. And to, to be a more effective agent, we need more flexibility in terms of the Endangered Species Act. That's been our position and we'll keep pushing that forward. Thank you, Mr. Warden. Okay. With that, number three. Number four. I can say to you that um, this, uh, in short, this was not a surprise uh, in the sense that we knew the NRU was going to be shut down in 2021 uh, in the best case scenario. 2018 is three years early. I think um, what really needs to be stressed is the federal government focused on the isotopes issue. The isotopes and the isotope production for medical use is one small part of what this reactor does. So the government has, by design or by accident, focused on that and suggested they have a solution. There is some suggestion their isotope solution isn't, isn't meeting our needs and we're going to lose that as a Canadian identity piece to the international market. The other piece is they've been allowed to, to skate on the issue of what, what other applications the, we're going to be using by shutting down the NRU. So that those are things that we'll be bringing forward in the next little while. We're working on, on some, uh, some information items and, and we'll keep you informed as, as, we, uh, as we roll them out. To get that information, we are consulting with some fairly knowledgeable staff, uh, or sorry, retired staff from uh, CNL, as well as some, uh, some industry experts. So we, we are putting together a, a well-researched response to this issue. Item number five. Item six, seven, eight. And again, if you have any summer students who you think uh, could benefit from this program, please steer them towards it. It's, it's um, for me, it's one of the highlights of, of being warden is going to the end of the year uh, in August uh, celebration when they talk about their experiences and what they learned and, and 
and what they're going to take away from it and some of the disciplines they've had to incorporate in their life in terms of operating their own planning and operating their own business and being accountable to themselves. Uh, Mayor Zineski, more please. What's the closing date for that? Um, to, uh, it says it starts January, or I'm just reading it, January 28th it starts. Do you know when it ends? Just, just so I can I tell you. I believe yes, it's mid to end May, but we'll confirm that. Okay, just so I know to tell them first. Just, okay, thank you. Thank you. Item number nine. Can I start on you, please? Uh, thank you, Mr. Ward. I'd like to, uh, to ask Mr. Morrow on the uh, award of various tracts. Uh, the very bottom one, uh, I acknowledge that it is an extremely small, uh, two and a half acres. There were no bids received. That's not entirely surprising. What will happen with that track will be rolled into one in the future that might be a larger track. Mr. Moore, please. Thank you, Morton, through you uh, to Councilor Donahue. Uh, staff are considering uh, different options and we'd like to bring that back to committee uh, at some point. Um, you're absolutely correct, it is a little bit on the small side, but again, staff thought given that it was a good block of cedar, that there was a specific market for that, whether it be the folks that were into the uh, deck uh, boards or uh, fencing business. We thought we would get some bids uh, on that one specifically. We actually were had a couple independent guys that we had never heard of before call us on that one and thinking we were going to get a bid, but we didn't get one. So again, we may want to look at some type of alternative uh, where someone comes in and takes a look at that block. Whether or not um, we come back in terms of one option being uh, we would contract out to harvesting and sell that um, lumber to one of those folks on the landing, have it scaled and uh, have it costed out in terms of what an appropriate um, a bid would be for that. That's one option, but again, staff will be reviewing options. And again, you raise another viable option and that is rolling in with another uh, block as well. So thank you for that and um, that would be, we'll bring that back. Councilor Jones, <coughs> supplementary. Supplementary, uh, thank you, Mr. Morton. Uh, the uh, tendering for these tracks, is this an open tender or are, are there pre qualified uh, uh, companies uh, for, for uh, tendering for these various tracks? Mr. Morrow? Thank you, Morton. Uh, through you to Councilor Donahue. Uh, it's an open tender, we get it, but there are qualifications in, in terms of the um, RFP process or the tender process that they must meet. There's actually a deposit required as well prior to starting to work. Thank you. Item number 11. Oh, I'm sorry, number 10. Sorry, number 10. Item number 11. <coughs> Item 12. 13. Councillor Dunyan. I'm just, uh, uh, if I could have a, a little bit more explanation of what it grows up. Uh, it was noted, I think, is, in, this is, I'm not sure what it was considered, but I did note that gross up is mentioned several times in this lease. Just have that explained, perhaps. Mr. Moore, please. Thank you, Warren. It's very good to Councilor Donahue. Again, I'm not the expert in it, but my understanding is informed by our manager of property is that it includes the cleaning and operations light heat hydro uh, are included in a gross lease as well in this particular case it's a little bit unique in that um, it is a child care facility that um, places a little bit extra demand on our cleaners uh, but again we are in discussions about with them on those extra costs associated with running that type of facility thank you your report as a whole um, mover please Councilor McKay, thank you. Discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? None is carried, thank you. And uh, social services with Councilor Robinson.
I'm assuming everyone's read this report many times, so I'm not going to read it for you. Under number five, the new Ontario Social Assistance Management System. Uh, I think it's very interesting in the appendix, the letters uh, from the Ontario Municipal Social Service Association, acknowledging the, uh, the challenges that are happening, as well as the response we got from the minister. The minister was also asked about it um, at the Rose this week and, uh, and responded as well. So it is obviously on their agenda. And what I understand from Mr. Anderson is there are improvements being made each and every day. Uh, the, uh, we also recognize the, uh, the stress that the staff is under and the professionalism with which they are continuing to uh, perform their duties. Uh, number six, the wage enhancement, home child care enhancement grant. Uh, note, uh, of note is the addition, in addition, the county rent will receive a one-time allocation of 40000 plus to support the administrative responsibilities associated with this funding. Also, uh, one of the other things I want to bring to your attention is the new funding agreements and arrangements with the licensed uh, child care centers and the licensed home child care agencies. And the county will continue to have full discretion in determining which operators or agencies they enter into purchase of service agreements with for the provision of other child care services. There are a number of reporting requirements and accountability mechanisms that must be put in place by the county of Grand for the distri distribution of this funding. So again, it is more work for the staff, and that's why we receive the grant. Uh, Canada Revenue Agency income tax clinics, you'll see they're listed here, and these are to, as to assist low to modest income individuals, including social assistance recipients, prepare their income tax returns free of charge. Number eight, under resolutions, the reclassification of the manager of the child care services, position of child care of coordinator of child care was introduced in 2005. The position was renamed manager of child care services in 2007. Since that time, the scope and range of responsibilities, education, and working conditions have changed significantly. The position was recently evaluated evaluated by the Director of Human Resources or with the Director of Social Services and Chief Administrative Officer for the Director. The Director of Human Resources has recommended the position be reclassified from Group 9, 73,295 to 86,230 to Group 10, 79,740 to 93,811. The reclassification was discussed during budget review and sufficient funds are in the child care budget to cover the increased cost. So resolution number SSCC 150215, moved by the chair and seconded by committee that the position of manager of child care services be reclassified from group nine to group 10. Under bylaws, the county of Redford child care policy revisions. On April 29, 2009, the Corporation of the County of Renfrew enacted bylaw number 58-09, being a bylaw to establish corporate policies and procedures for child care services for the County of Renfrew. Since that time, there have been several updates and changes to the policies, and again, there is a need to make changes to some of the policies to ensure ongoing compliance with the Ministry of Education guidelines. As well, a new policy, policy CC-14, has been created to address the wage enhancement slash home, home child care enhancement grant funding recently released by the Ministry of Education. Resolution number SSCC 150211. Moved by the chair and seconded by the committee that the county, that county council approves revisions to the following child care services policies and procedures, as well as the addition of policy CC 14 and the bylaw 58 09 be amended for this purpose. CC01, CC02, CC03, CC14, CC15, and CC16. Further, the County Council approves revisions to all child care policies and procedures when the Child Care Early Years Act 2014 is enacted to replace references to the Dave Nearshoes Act with reference to references to the Child Care and Early Years Act 2014. Number 10, the Child Care Services Agreement. The current child care, child care services agreement was approved by the county's bylaw on April 27, 2011. 
As a result of this consultation with legal counsel, it has been recently revised to reflect new reporting requirements and changes made to ensure increased operator accountability. Accordingly, it is now necessary to rescind bylaw 45-11 and enter into a new revised agreement. Resolution number SSCC 15-02-12, moved by the chair and seconded by committee, the bylaw 4511 be rescinded and the county and that county council adopt the bylaw to enter into the new child care services, child care special needs services agreement. Number 12, child care wage enhancement service agreement. As a result of the new wage enhancement, home child care enhancement grant funding, a service agreement has been developed. The service agreement with child care operators is a requirement of Ministry of Education and will assist with ensuring operator accountability regarding the management of wage enhancement grant funding. Resolution number SSCC 15-02-14, moved by the chair and seconded by committee, that a bylaw be adopted by county council, council authorizing the board and CAO clerk to enter into a contract agreement with licensed child care providers for the purpose of receiving <coughs> wage enhancement, home child care enhancement grant funding. All of which is respectfully, respectfully submitted on my mouth and drawing board. <laughs> Moved by myself, many members, Emil, Farrar, Gibson, Grants, McKay, Ryan, Long, and staff. Thank you. Members of council, comments, questions, concerns for item number one. Item two. Item three. Councilor McKay, please. Thank you. Um, I have one question that may lead to others, but under the chart for social housing registry wait list, the number is at 901. And from my perspective, I'm wondering if there's an acceptable number or percentage at the county and provincial level that raises a red flag to say, we have a large number, and I don't know if 901 is a large number, but it appears in my mind to be large, um, that is, uh, anyway, is there an acceptable number or percentage, and at what point is a red flag raised to say that Redfoot County needs additional help or or or? Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Anderson, please. Uh, through you, Warden, and to the Councilor's question, uh, absolutely 900 is a high number. The red flag is always up. I think uh, the Social Services Committee, through the Renford County Housing Corporation, deals with this every month. And you know, uh, efforts have, uh, have been extended in the last number of years to build new affordable housing here in the county of Renford, and the numbers continue to rise. You know, it's, it's an issue of income and affordability. And uh, it's not unique to the county of Renford, it's right across the province of Ontario. So the number of people looking for affordable accommodation continues to be very high in Ontario and is high here in the county of Renfrew. Uh, your question is, you know, do we need more affordable housing? Do we need more housing? It, it is always an issue. You know, the committee uh, through this chamber has come up with multiple programs working with both the public and the private sector to try and bring those numbers down, but they continue to, they continue to be challenged. There's never enough money to do everything that you'd like to do. Supplementary? Supplementary, please, if I will get to know that in your suit. Um, in relation then to other counties within our province, do we have a measurement on are we on the low end or the high end at the provincial level? And again, I, I, if I might go back and just elaborate a little bit more on my question, the first question, which is the provincial level, um, when we say we are high and it's, it's a provincial problem, where, or is there anything being done at the provincial level? More than two points. Uh, the Eastern Ontario Warden's Caucus did do a study on social housing, so with your concurrence, I'll perhaps circulate that. Secondly, I will circulate also provincial statistics uh, by service manager area on uh, the number, the wait list on social housing. Uh, just so that you get a sense, and I think you want a sense, you know, where do we kind of stack up, and we'll address that and bring it back uh, to the chamber uh, or for future discussion if you so choose. Okay, thank you. Mr. Hutton. 
Thank you. Uh, Mr. Anderson actually addressed the Orange Caucus. It's about the middle of the pack in terms of Eastern Ontario counties. Uh, the Warden's Caucus did a white paper study, which Mr. Anderson referred to. Um, so it's, it's about the middle of the pack. It's a high number. Uh, we're certainly working on it. And, uh, I can provide that to David. I think you already have it. Thank you very much. What I can add to that is um, the numbers are reflective of a couple of things, uh, or may not, may not entirely pass <laughs> them. The waiting list is driven in part by there's been no significant new investment by the federal government or the provincial government in replacing the stock that we have, nor adding new stock. Um, they're aware of the issue and the problem. The other, the other uh, thing to note is that the federal government has steadily withdrawn their support for affordable housing and will eventually end it, I believe, in about 15 years. So there is a crisis coming which the federal government has consistently chosen to ignore. But they're ignoring their responsibility to the Canadian uh, citizens. So those are the two of the issues. The other thing you should be aware of is there are about 165 to 168,000 people on the waiting list across the province. And it, it tends to, uh, as one person comes on, one person comes on. So it's, it's probably not even a true number because as soon as a person is served, there seems to be another one by a miracle show up. So that number stays fairly consistent in, in that range. So that it's a larger problem that the province and the federal government need to address because we don't have the resources um, to do it alone. And there's also the, the more legitimate question as to why this is on the, uh, on the backs of municipal taxpayers as it is a provincial and federal social program. So those are some of the things that we have flagged as part of the group and have moved on and, and you know, the Warden's Caucus has raised it as recently as last week, or this week, sorry. Councillor Duncan. Thank you, Mr. Warren. I just want to comment that, uh, from my perspective anyway, I, I mean, it's probably semantics, but I guess there is no acceptable level. There are certainly uh, constraints upon, upon uh, what, what we can certainly do in, in Brentford County, especially given where the province and the, the nation stand on this. But also these these people on these waiting lists are waiting for uh, social housing. Uh, these aren't homeless, like they are moved. Presumably they are all homeless. Perhaps some of them are homeless. Um, but it's not like they are, they are for the most part, uh, out in the elements. It is just that they are not in the assisted housing market. Is that correct? David? That is correct. Thank you. With that, we'll move to uh, item number four. Item number five, uh, I can report to you that the SAMS uh, uh, issue was discussed at length. Uh, the Eastern Ontario Wardens Caucus raised it with uh, the ministers of the Multi Ministerial Panel. Councilor Robinson noted that it over the minister was questioned on it during the, uh, the open session. Uh, in short, she informed us that there was a third party technical advisor reviewing the system and was going to report back to her within the next, uh, I believe, two months. And they were in the process of, of supplying some extra funding to, to cover off the costs that have been picked up by the service provider, which is us, our service manager, sorry. So there is some attempt to repair the system. Uh, there is also some attempt to, in part, mitigate the additional cost to us. Don't expect anything quick. <laughs> item number six. Item seven. Item eight. Councillor Kuzneski Ward. Thank you, Mr. Ward. Uh, does the reclassification then cause a ripple? Bruce, you probably Anderson. know what I mean. Does it affect then? Or Mr. B, mm -hmm. please. Through you, Mr. Ward, to a chamber. No, it doesn't because it's in a bed, but also a male compared. Okay. And my second question is, uh, is any portion of that, I have no problem with it, by the way, David, so um, is any portion of it paid by uh, other levels of government? Oh, good. And I like that. 100%? No. Close? Oops. Thank you. That's all. As much as is necessary to make us and Mr. Kutchke very happy. Okay. As long as Kutchke's happy, I'm happy. <laughs> 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 just laughing it up. 
Item number nine, please. <laughs> item 10, item 11, item 12, report as a whole. Move, please. So move, thank you very much. Discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? None. It's carried. Thank you.
Uh, I still believe that that's a really an important uh, issue for us to uh, deal with and try to get there. So what I did ask at the FNA uh, committee meeting was that the, uh, that the, the uh, conference in Edmonton in June, I believe this year for FCM, that I'd be allowed to attend. And I use the word then, I'll use it here, lobby for, uh, for a position. I think it's a matter of getting known and getting a face out there from Renfrew County to get with the, and my hopes would be to maybe get an appointment to a committee of the FCM and get started to, in that process. The issue here is that estimated uh, numbers to look at the cost of that is probably somewhere between $4,500 and $5,000. The uh, conference budget this year or each year for each councillor is $2,750. So the request was that the difference be made up out of the $6,000 that was budgeted for FCM in the 2015 county budget. Uh, so there's, uh, we estimate that to be somewhere, like I said, eighteen dollars to $2,000 more in cost. That budget and the, the amount of that line item in the budget is $6,000. Okay. So the resolution uh, FACC-15-02-23 that comes for staff be approved to attend the 2015 Federation of Canadian Municipalities Conference in Edmonton, Alberta in June, and further that any expenditures beyond Councillor Stack's yearly conference allotment of 2750 be approved to be taken from the Federation of Canadian Municipalities Board of Director funds set aside as part of the 2015 budget. Number 19 is the uh, August 2015 meeting in Redford County Council, a request from the town of Petawawa that it be held in Petawawa to uh, be part of the celebrations of their 150th anniversary. There's a resolution there, but I have to tell you, we did that a couple of years ago in Aaron Prayer with our 150th, and it really went over well in the community. I think it's a great idea. Resolution number FACC-15-02-25, moved by chair and seconded by committee, that county council accept the town of Petawawa's invitation to host August 26, 2015 meeting with county council. Bylaws <coughs> number 20 is the user fee bylaw and schedule. And the resolution is number FACC-15-02-21, moved by chair and seconded by committee, that a bylaw to establish the required, required payment of user fees and charges be adopted at this session of County Council, and further that the previous user fee bylaw 14-14 be repealed. Number 21 is the employment uh, bylaw, and the resolution is number FACC-15-02-27, moved by Chair and Second Committee, that the County Council approve the following changes to employment bylaw number one, effective January 1st, 2015. A, the lifetime maximum for benefit claims be increased from $50,000 to $75,000 for all non-union employees who retire after March 1st, 2015. B, a 2% wage increase for all non-union staff except students as outlined in schedules A and B. C, the mileage allowance increased from 54 to 55 cents per kilometer for the first 5,000 kilometers per year and from 48 to 49 per kilometer for all kilometers over 5,000 per year. D, position of the child care facilitator be added to the county of rent for staff classifications and the salary range under group three, 41,169 to 48,4,34. E, the position of the best start planner and healthy kids community to challenge project coordinator be added to the County of Renfrew staff classification and salary arrangements under Group 4, which is $46,301 to $54,431. F, the position of Manager of Child Care Services be moved from Group 9, which is $73,295 to $86,230, to Group 10, which is $79,740 to a $93,811 range. And further, that a revised employment Bylaw number one can be adopted at this session of County Council, all of which is respectfully submitted by staff, your chair, and committee members, Emo, Love, Miller, <coughs> Murphy, Debbie Robinson, Sweet, and Vanessa Moore. Thank you. Comments, questions, concerns from members of the Council on item number one, item two, item three, four. Item five, item six, 
Item 7, Councillor Dunham. i just like to note, uh, Mr. Ward, at the uh, bottom of the page, uh, I have it as 118 on the uh, computer, which is the report from the uh, Eastern Ontario Warden's Caucus, and uh, it tripped me up. The uh, final paragraph uh, says additional partners to the remaining 25% will be sought, including the EOMC, and I'm assuming that was the EOWC because I couldn't find the EOMC to find anywhere. No, I'm sorry, that is Eastern Ontario Mayor's Committee. The, oh, okay. The, the mayors such as Pembroke and Kingston and uh, Brockville and several others, I think 12 in number, who are separated from the, the counties. They have their own their own committee, and in this instance, we're partnering with them. Okay, then in that instance where there is, uh, we're, we're seeing it, I think, for the first time, that I couldn't find anywhere uh, a reference to what the EOMC was, just in, in, in the preparation of these reports, the first time it, it shows up, could be spelled out. Sure, that was that was my mistake, um, just breezing through it too quickly, to be honest with you. But I, I will make a better effort. Rules will make a better effort to trip me up. Item number eight, nine. Item ten, eleven. Item twelve. I can hardly wait for the glowing and smiling faces in the videos. Thank you, folks. Item thirteen. I see Councillor Bruns is volunteering to be first. <laughs> I, Did he really? No, no, no. He's, he's driving around to be sick for the next 364 days. <laughs> item 14. Item 15. 16. 17. Item 18. 19. Oh, I'm sorry, Councillor uh, Kingsbury. If I could just uh, get you to go back a little bit, uh, number uh, 18. Sure. Has anyone ever sat on that board, the SCM board from the county before? Uh, <coughs> not to my uh, recollection. Not that I, and I've been here a long time, not that I remember. And yeah, not since it's I've not been since been the Osage, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it, it hadn't been, and that's been something that, um, you know, we've discussed a number of times, and, and finally we have a, a someone who has the time and interest in it. Um, I, I attend them, I've attended them as Mayor of Greater Madawaska, now as Warden, um, I think uh, 12 of the last 15 years. And it's, it, it's one of the more useful conferences because you, you have an opportunity to sit with people from the East Coast and Alberta, and, and just as a point of reference, I was very popular because of the Eastern Ontario Regional Network was sought out because of that. Um, also then received some information from Alberta uh, about a uh, purchasing model that municipalities could use to purchase large uh, large items or, or large number of items uh, for road work and stuff like that. So it's a pretty good conference in terms of sharing information um, about systems because we're all quite similar, although slightly different even if you went to BC, which is very different. Um, so it's a good it's a good area, and Minister LaBelle from uh, the federal government is, is always there. People from the federal finance department are there as well. FCM drove the uh, drove the gas tax issue down through to Amol to to us the federal gas tax issue with uh, Paul Martin in about 2005 or 2004. So it that's probably the crowning achievement of FCM is to get the federal gas tax initially as a as an introductory program. They're also very good at nailing our infrastructure needs uh, to the federal government. Councillor Wisniewski, more than that. Yes, uh, Mr. Warden, thank you. Uh, it is a great, I attended when I was the warden too, and it is a great conference. Um, I think, uh, uh, again, uh, to my recollection, there has never been anybody from County Council sitting on the FCM board. And I think it is a wonderful opportunity, and I think that uh, restack uh, going there and becoming visible will uh, maybe help us in the approach that one day we could have uh, him sitting on one of the committees. Um, you, you learn a lot when you go there. Um, I had some issues, and just uh, uh, having lunch with your colleagues, your uh, 
uh, talking to them and they gave me some ideas which I have since used at home. Uh, it's just t small tidbits, but it, it, everybody's got the same problems and everybody handles it differently. So I found it very, very uh, a great conference and I really do wish uh, Reef Stack the best. Uh, uh, it would be wonderful, absolutely wonderful if the county could be represented through uh, Reef Stack. So I, I uh, really, uh, if anybody does have an opportunity to go, it's well worth the money. So thank you. you uh, staff and then okay, please. Yeah. I, uh, remember the only person I know within the county now municipally who's been involved is the newly elected mayor of Deep River as sat on the board of directors of one time. She was uh, helpful and supportive of me through the process of the application last fall and uh, did via email introduce me to the incoming president who is a friend of hers and he said that he would you know, spend a few minutes with me and try to give me some sort of guidelines. So I just, you know, the whole intent there, as I said, is really to try to lobby and, and get us out there in the space and whether we succeed this time or not, I think it's an important issue for us to to go after the future as well. Thank you, Councilor McKay, please. Um, I would like to thank everybody has said I have attended this conference and it's one of the ones I've already recommended this morning before the council started. Um, the question that I have is if Councilor staff is there to represent county council as a whole and we are all in favor of that representation, then I question why we would be requesting him to use his yearly allowance of $2,700 to go because it seems to be unfair. If the money is available for the salary that was put aside, then I think he should have an opportunity to still have a, um, a conference of choice as the rest of us have. And that uh, if we're all in favor of of soliciting and lobbying for this representation, then I think it's prudent that we support 100% of it as opposed to a component of it. If I may, the, if this was a, a means of avoiding why Councillor Stack is more deserving than myself to go. If, if four people showed up and wanted to go um, <laughs> with varying possibilities of success of being on the committee. So we were, we were trying to get away from having to make a decision if, if four people or three members of council wanted to go thinking that, that they deserved it better than anybody else. This was the way of, of testing, for lack of a better description, uh, <coughs> Stack's resolve to go by him proposing that he would use the 2750 for this plus the, plus the top up. So it was a it was a means of not of not trying to overcomplicate it and put in a four page selection process. To be quite frank, I, I sorry I still still just I understand everything that you're saying, but it seems like we did discuss this at our first or second council meeting, the one we were we were um, anyway. Okay, take it for what it is. Thank okay, you. Thank you, and, and as a, of course you know my tendency to oversimplify things. Councillor Stack? I appreciate the comments, and I've been to most of the other conferences, probably more than once. This is that uh, important to me. I'm quite content with this process the way it is. I really uh, appreciate the support. Thank you. Item number 19, I think we're back to 20, 21. Report as a whole. A movement, please. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? None is carried. Thank you. And operations with uh, Councillor Donahue, please. Thank you, Mr. Wharton. I am uh, sitting in the stead of the uh, chair, uh, Councillor Murphy, who did not attend this morning. Um, members of County Council, we are operations committee, which to report and recommend as follows. For information purposes, uh, you can see in front of you winter operations. Uh, there has been a slight reduction in, uh, in comparison to previous. I do want to commend the senior staff if you look at the uh, number of event days in the table for December. Um, I acknowledge the great efforts of senior staff to arrange that the events were predominantly happening through the week and not on weekends prior to the Christmas season. Uh, item two is the uh, operations uh, committee meetings are to be held in 
uh, akin to the uh, celebration of the 150th of Petawawa to move the operations committee uh, to various uh, uh, municipalities that comprise the county through the county. And item three is the capital program construction schedule uh, for the year 2015. On the resolutions, uh, the, the, within the agreement on the provision of SALT, the contract for the provision of SALT, uh, there is provision for extending that contract in negotiation with the, the uh, supplier and the uh, staff feel that this is uh, something that should be done uh, on a, what they feel is a good uh, contract, uh, good price on the SALT delivered. So moved by the chair, seconded by vice chair, seconded by committee, that the extension of contract PW 2011-01 for supply and delivery of winter salt at the rate of $89.17 per ton for the 2015-2016 winter season be approved. In bylaws, uh, there was a consolidating bylaw passed by County Council uh, May 30th, 2001. The consolidated bylaw being used for a variety of purposes. Uh, it, it was uh, deemed uh, by uh, staff that it was timely that it be reviewed now, given that we are 14 years on. Uh, so uh, I have a resolution OPCC 15 02 15 15 15 moved by vice chair, seconded by committee, that a bylaw be passed to consolidate all bylaws with respect to roads and bridges included in county road system. Item number six is a bylaw to alter highways, and this is a bylaw uh, deemed to be necessary uh, when there is going to be uh, what might be construed as an abrogation of, of an individual the right to access or traverse uh, uh, county uh, roads. And this bylaw will affect County Road 19, Mud Lake Road Rehabilitation, County Structure C065, the Rocky and Creek Culvert Replacement, County Structure C190, the Buckholtz uh, Culvert Replacement. Item D, County Structure C151, Wadsworth Culvert Replacement. And Item E, County Structure C251, Armstrong Culvert Replacement. Uh, resolution number OPCC 15-02-16, moved by Vice Chair, seconded by Committee, that a bylaw be passed approving the alterations to county roads and structures all of which is respectfully submitted. Uh, Michael Donahue, Vice Chair and Committee Members, uh, uh, Warren Emo, Councillor Farr, Councillor Grunts, Councillor Kingsbury, and Councillor Peckett. Thank you, and I believe you have an addendum, item number seven. I did indeed pass over some very good news. Thank you, uh, <coughs> thank you, Mr. Morton. Uh, and in fact, we met as committee this morning and it was discussed that the uh, application-based uh, funding for um, the, I believe this is the Mud, Mud Lake uh, Road Rehabilitation, and the, uh, the application was the amount of one and a quarter million dollars, and the application was successful, so certainly acknowledged the, uh, the efforts of senior staff in putting together that, uh, that application for that funding, and that committee, it took about two minutes to receive one and a quarter million dollars, and I'm certain that it will take a lot longer whenever we're going to be spending it one and a quarter million dollars, but it was with uh, some, some certainly uh, some smiles in the room. Uh, so I have uh, resolution number OPCC 15-02-21, moved by vice chair, seconded by committee, that a bylaw be passed to authorize the County of Redford to enter into an agreement with the Minister of Agriculture, Food and Rural Affairs for the Ontario Community Infrastructure Fund application based component, file number OSIF AC 0237, and that the warden and clerk be authorized to execute the agreement on behalf of the County of Redford. Now it is respectfully submitted by the aforementioned councillors. Thank you. Questions, comments, concerns, item number one for members of council. Item uh, two, three, councillor Vesnesky Moore. Thank you. Um, I do want to, excuse me, I do want to thank the committee and uh, especially Steve Boland for that uh, monthly project status report that's attached. That's wonderful. I think that's a really good idea. I've never seen that before. Maybe not, we've done it before, 
Uh, but I do want to thank the committee and trustee for that. I, it absolutely lays everything out. If I have questions, the answer is right in front of me. So again, to Mr. Boland and to the operations committee, uh, thank you very much for providing us with that. Thank you. Item number four, Councillor Stack. Yeah, thank you. Just for uh, some discussion with some of the new councillors, this uh, the salt issue, all the years it was on operations, always sort of amazed me. I think we paid almost a million and three a year to buy salt for, the, for our 850 or 60 kilometers of road. It's a huge amount of money. And the reality is, uh, Steve will correct me if I'm wrong, but there's only two companies that basically supply it, so it's really a tight Target. So getting these kinds of minimal increases each, each year is uh, is really solid management as well too. Thank you. Item number five. Item six. Item seven. The report as a whole. Mover. Yeah. Oh, sorry. The addendum was item seven. Oh, oh sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, item seven. The addendum. The report as a whole. Mover, please. So move as Councilor Dunn. Uh, and discussion, Councilor Farr? No, okay, thank you. All those in favor? Opposed, not as carried, thank you. And we'll move to Mayor Wisniewski Moore and Health, please. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Wharton. Members of County Council, we, your health committee, wish to report and recommend as follows. Information item number one is the resident population. Number two, patients first, action plan for health. Number three is the long-term care homes, uh, the case mix index results. Number four is the uh, health unit inspections at the lodge. Number five is the fundraising activities at the lodge. Number six is the senior talent show resolutions. Uh, resolution number HCC 150215, moved by the chair. Seconded by committee that County Council approved the selection of Roland Emergency Pro uh, Products to provide 11 powered ambulance stretchers to the County of Renfrew Paramedic Service in the amount of $184,565.24, inclusive of HST, service agreement, and trade in allowance. And further, that a bylaw authorizing the warden and CAO clerk to sign the contract be adopted at an upcoming session of county councils. Bylaws, resolution number HCC 150214, moved by the chair, seconded by committee, that county council support the partnership between the county of Refruit and Health Links to enter into a one-year pilot project seconding a county of council community paramedic to partner with Health Links to enhance primary and home care response to underserviced communities. And further, that a bylaw authorizing the warden and CAO clerk to sign the agreement be adopted at this session of County Council, all of which is respectfully submitted by myself as chair, committee members, Don Caster, Donahue, Eamon, Kingsbury, Love, and Reinwald. Thank you. Comments, questions, concerned members of council with item number one, item two, three, four, item five, six, seven, the report is a whole eight. eight. Sorry, uh, Councillor Robinson, please. I just want to mention um, under service communities, can Maybe we can just get a little bit of elaboration on what this whole thing is going to entail. Uh, thank you, Warden, uh, Councillor Robinson. The uh, this is a provincial initiative with um, ties to the to the whim. The criteria for selecting the communities I'm not entirely clear on. However, we did qualify under under that funding model. Um, the uh, the, the benefit of this program to us is that we not only have a, another unit on the road to serve the community in terms of uh, the home visits uh, that, is, that it's designed to, to uh, accommodate, it's also, we also have the inherent ability to uh, provide further surge capacity, which is essentially when the sky falls. We have another vehicle that's able to, uh, to respond in, in those regards. 
um, in regard, were you specifically looking for what capacity or, or what criteria were determ in determining the uh, the need? Councillor Robinson, supplementary. Yes, I was. I was, I was just curious as to how the communities are going to be chosen, just so we understand that. And I'm, I'm assuming we're not talking under service communities as in the whole of Edmonton County. So we weren't um, actually we. This program is to um, administer care to the entire county. Um, in, in terms of selecting the uh, the underserved communities, I'm, I'm not entirely clear on what criteria provincially that denoted. However, the expectation of this extra vehicle will be uh, to have it available for the entire county of Renfrew. Thank you. And with that, um, mover, please. I so move, Mr. Warden. Discussion? Prior to taking the vote, just a, a plug for the Derby Delight Gala, which will be on the Saturday, May 23rd for a Kentucky Derby themed evening. Uh, this, this is always a great event, uh, different themes. Um, I even part of my hard earned sweaty cash to uh, bid on silent auction events. Uh, I ended up with two, uh, I know you find it's hard to believe, but two restaurant coupons <laughs> and uh, passed on golf and skiing and a number of other activities. So I went with a restaurant theme that night. So please attend if you get the opportunity. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Not as carried. Thank you. Mr. Warden, I just want to apologize. I should have uh, been promoting that, so I apologize. No, you were letting me have the glory. I hope you're good. Next, we'll move to bylaws, please. Thank you, Mr. Warden. Moved by myself, uh, seconded by my colleague to my left, Tom Peckett, that the bylaws listed on item 11 and attached here to a Schedule A on the County Council agenda dated February 26, 2015, be deemed read three times and passed. You've heard the motion, discussion. All those in favor? Opposed? None. It's carried. Thank you. Notice of motions, members written motions, and new business. What I'd like to do is draw your attention to a poster you have on your desk and ask you to uh, promote it through your local community and through your council. We're calling it the Warden's Family Day Don't Tank Challenge Fundraiser, which is quite easy to say. <laughs> it's August the 15th at, nine, at uh, 11 until 3. And the public is welcome, and donations are, are uh, welcome for entry and support of the Redford County United Way. We're featuring one of the uh, one of the activities, which we are sure will be overrun by participants, is the, the councillors. So if you could sign up or have uh, a designated member of your council sign up on your behalf, preferably somebody new. Um, <laughs> you, you, you can use the bully pulpit if you're the one. Um, it's just a, it's a great opportunity for us. As you know, the United Way is very uh, is is very close to our organization, and it's an organization that transcends uh, out over the whole county, you know, the whole community. It's uh, not just urban, nor rural, nor senior, nor younger population, nor recreation or health. It uh, it funds uh, existing programs and also funds new community-based initiatives. Uh, with the exception of our organization, it's probably the only other organization which has a similar reach across all municipalities. And uh, we, I think, have a, I agree that we have a, a responsibility to, to promote Renfrew County and to service the whole community, and this allows us to do that. Um, and I think we've had a good example with our staff because they've contributed to this program, the United Way uh, campaign, for a number of years through their internal. Uh, fundraising mechanisms. So I'm hopeful that, that you will join uh, join with myself and your other members uh, this year uh, on uh, August 15th. And uh, as successful as it becomes, we will then uh, hopefully uh, and likely ensure that it's an annual event. Councillor Wisniewski, more please. I just want to know what time you're in that dunk tank I'm so that I'm here to dunk you. I'm expecting to be there probably at 11 and 1 and maybe 3. All right. So at, at, least, at least two appearances and maybe three. Okay. So just so we know, we want to be there whenever you're. Home. I have a feeling. <laughs> I thought that would be the attraction. Anyway, thank you very much, and I, and I hope you're able to attend and to support this. 
And uh, closed. Nothing for closed. A confirmatory bylaw, please. Thank you, Mr. Warden. Uh, moved by myself, seconded by John Reinwald, that a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of the Council of the County of Renfrew at a meeting held on February 26, 2015, be now numbered, deemed, read three times and passed. Bylaw number 21 15. Thank you, Council. You've heard the motion. Discussion? <coughs> All those in favor? Opposed? None. It's carried. Thank you. And I'd like to compliment all members of council. I understand everybody was extremely well behaved at Good Roads. Uh, I didn't get any calls for bail or, or any any asks for money at two in the morning to pay bar bills, so I'm very impressed. Um, I did see uh, Councillor Esky Moore. I did see Councillor Kingsbury. I did see Councillor Packett, Councillor Donahue, Councillor Love a couple of times, and Councillor Farr and Councillor Robinson. So it's quite a representation, uh, as well as uh, Councillor Moore. I got up. And uh, again, uh, I'm looking forward to various times in the next uh, few days or a few months that you uh, share your experiences with us uh, during the committee process. So if you have anything to add uh, based on your um, presentations you attended, we would appreciate that. Thank you. Motion to adjourn, please. Councillor Vizneski Moore, seconded by Councillor Reinwald. Discussion, all those in favor? Opposed, on this carry. Thank you, and lunch will be served. <laughs>